let me continue to just talk about some of the approaches that we use and that are, are in use in terms of being able to help our patients stop smoking. And I'm, I want to specifically talk about pharmacotherapy and I want to take the opportunity to kind of do a 10,000 foot flyover, um, knocking off some zombies along the way, hopefully. Um, and, and all of the guidelines speak of, of the, the uh, ability of pharmacothera cessation pharmacotherapy to assist with smoking cessation. A and we have three first line or front line therapies. And I'm just going to take a few minutes to talk about each of them and hopefully dispel some very substantial myths uh, that occur. So let's talk first of all about nicotine replacement therapy. Been around for a long time. The whole rationale, as we'll see in a moment, is that if you can boost nicotine levels at to or get close to that kind of comfort zone that, of nicotine that people want, then when their nicotine levels fall, they don't fall as far as they would and so therefore the craving and withdrawal symptoms don't predominate and don't impel them to seek out another cigarette. Um, so very solid kind of, uh, kind of, kind of rationale. Um, the products are available without prescription uh, and in order of rapidity of delivery of nicotine, um, go from the patch, which is the slowest, to a, a nicotine spray. All of these products deliver nicotine through the venous system in a slow or a much slower manner than would be the case if an individual inhaled a cigarette. So either through the skin, in the case of the patch, or through the mucous or membranes of, 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 of the mouth or the throat. And so the comparison in terms of the amount of nicotine that's delivered to a patient using nicotine replacement therapy and smoking a cigarette is night and day. And, and that's why I go to such lengths to talk about when you deliver nicotine by smoking, you're delivering it via the arterial system, not the venous system. And so all kinds of misconceptions about the safety of nicotine ha have arisen and we'll try to knock those out of the park in, in just a second. So advantages, yeah, available, relatively inexpensive, doesn't require prescription, shortcomings used very badly by clinicians and by the public uh, at large. We still get messages from patients who say, well, my doctor said he wants me to use the patch but only for two weeks because he doesn't want me to get addicted to the patch. Okay. <laughs> McGill graduate, obviously, right? <laughs> but, uh, but so there are all of these kinds of zombie concepts uh, out there. And, and, and people do not appreciate or, or uh, understand that like every other medication, we should manage smoking cessation pharmacotherapies by providing an initial dose, monitoring the response, adjusting the dose in proportion to the response, and then adjusting the duration of therapy until the desired endpoint has come along. We don't treat all ankle fractures by putting a plaster cast on for six weeks. And then when the patient comes back and you say, I'm taking the cast out, they go, well, hang on a sec, my ankle's killing me. I can't possibly walk on the ankle. Doesn't matter. Fractures heal in six weeks. The cast is coming off. And yet that fixed dose paradigm of nicotine, you know, we're going to have four weeks of this and four weeks of that and two to four weeks of that. And then you should be able to do this yourself. This is Presbyterian light. Okay, it's kind of we're New Age Presbyterianism. But um, so, you know, I, I, I think uh, with a bit of hyperbole, I, I've made that particular point because the standard dose of nicotine replacement therapy will not meet the comfort requirements of nicotine for many of today's smokers. And so you should be prepared to adjust the dose. And so our standard orders for nicotine replacement therapy at the Heart Institute say, for every pack a day that you smoke of cigarettes, you get one 21 milligram patch. And if you're a four pack a day smoker, you're probably gonna get three and a bit patches, maybe four, and the use of an inhaler. Right. We are not afraid to appropriately manage nicotine craving. In exactly we are the same way, we are not afraid to take on hypertension or dyslipidemia. And we don't say we're going to treat your hypertension with hydrochlorothiazide, 50 milligrams a day for four weeks, then 25 milligrams a day for four weeks, and then 12.5 milligrams for the final two weeks of your hypertension control attempt. Bring you back, measure your blood pressure. You're still hypertensive please go away and think more seriously about when you're prepared to make your next hypertension control attempt. And, and 
this is kind of a confessional for me because I spent half a decade going around the province when NRT first came into being telling people this is how, how you did this, right? You just needed to ensure that they, their moral fiber was, uh, was reinforced. So the important concept here is that I think when we're talking about smoking cessation, we're trying to help people open a doorway onto a smoke-free future and sometimes that doorway has to be held open much, much wider and much, much longer. And at the risk of seeming to be very simplistic, uh, cessation pharmacotherapy, as much as it takes, for as long as it takes. And, and I have no qualms in seeing a patient who's 12 months post heart transplant who says, gee, for the first time in 38 years, I'm smoke free, but if I take these two patches off, man, the urge to go back to smoking is so, fill your boots, keep putting a patch on your left shoulder, put your nitro patch on your right shoulder, we'll see you in three months. And, and, and by the way, I, I don't want you to believe that this is kind of standard practice or necessary in every case, but it happens. But when I use the heart transplant example, people's heads always kind of, oh yeah, oh, heart transplant, big deal, right? Well, if it's best practice for an individual whose life expectancy may be in single digits, why is it not best practice for a 22-year-old woman who's trying to stop smoking uh, at the same time that a clinician is providing her with birth control pills? Uh, and and P.S., again, most clinicians are not aware of the things that they do on a daily basis which can, can, pardon me, can alter the rate of nicotine metabolism, which we feel is an important determinant as to whether you're likely to become a smoker and as to whether you're likely to have difficulty stopping smoking. You place a woman on a birth control pill, her rate of nicotine metabolism may double. When a woman becomes pregnant, her rate of nicotine metabolism may triple or quadruple or even more. And now we begin to have some reasons as to why it is that those seemingly insightful, determined young women who always looked as squarely in the eye and said, when I get pregnant, I'm stopping smoking, I can get, have such difficulty with this. Uh, and and I, I think these kinds of concepts speak to our failures over the last few decades to really understand uh, some of the fundamental underpinnings of smoking behavior and the way in which smoking behavior in the administration of all of the uh, products in, t in tobacco uh, has an impact or an effect on, on other clinical conditions. So we are quite comfortable titrating the therapy, titrating the dose and the duration, and increasingly using combination therapy to help smoking cessation. So, as you might guess, in our setting, one of the biggest zombies that constantly assails our institution, although we don't let them into the perimeter anymore, are, are the zombies that say you can't use NRT in cardiac patients. So hold your breath. If you're prone to seizures, the next rapid display of slides uh, may induce some problems. But uh, the slides go like this. The safety of NRT in cardiovascular data is supported by data from randomized trials, efficacy studies, observational and physical clinical trials in patients suggest that nicotine does not increase cardio. The use of nicotine patches does not cause aggravation of myocardial ischemia or arrhythmia in coronary patients and can be used as a method to promote. High dose, even with smoking, causes no short-term adverse effects. The use of NRT is not a so... Have I showed you enough slides? Uh, and unfortunately, this is what it takes to kill off zombies because you kill off one zombie and there's 16 of them lurching towards you uh, and, and so it's necessary to kind of have this uh, scattergun approach. And perhaps this is the best evidence that I can share with you. Uh, and this is our own clinical experience, although it's, I'm embarrassed to say it's seven years old now. But if you look down in the bottom right hand corner, these are individuals admitted with an acute cardiac syndrome. That is, they've got unstable angina or they've got a fresh, within an hour, myocardial infarction. And these are individuals who come to our coronary care unit, and at that time, 70% of those individuals who were smokers were getting NRT applied in that setting with no problem whatsoever. Except that a reduced rate of prescription of hypnotics and anxiolytics, a reduction in behavioral challenges as people rang their bell constantly, threatened to sign themselves out, were irritated and obnoxious and uncooperative with nursing staff because they were experiencing nicotine withdrawal. Uh, and whether you're admitted to hospital with a fractured femur or a premature labor or an anterior wall infarction, if you're a smoker, quite predictably, it's likely that you will experience nicotine withdrawal. And so now that hospitals and healthcare facilities are smoke free, we have to be prepared to ensure, if for no other reason than to facilitate the comfort of our patients and en passant facilitate the compliance with treatment to treat nicotine withdrawal. And, and developing protocols and standard orders will rapidly 
rapidly allow clinicians to be ven become very comfortable and very competent and very and, and, and uh, with with the uh, um, comfortable, competent, and confident with with the administration of nicotine replacement therapy.